blended learning is the merging of the classic face-to-face -face learning with online learning. To create a highly engaging blended learning experience, we want to take the best of both worlds and bring them together. But how do we begin to do that? First, we must reflect and discover what is the most effective use of our face-to-face -face time with our students. And what's the most effective use of our online time with our students? Now, keeping students engaged in college classes is by no means a new challenge. For decades, professors have struggled to maintain the attention span of young minds in classrooms. Here we see a law professor engaging in song and dance to keep his pupils alert in this sculptural frieze which adorns the professor's entrance to the law building on Yale's campus. But arguably the engagement challenge has certainly intensified. First, as we tackle the problem of engagement as educators, it's really critical for us to contextualize learning as something does not, that does not occur exclusively in a formalized classroom, but rather as a natural process that flows throughout an individual's life from birth to death. And our informal learning experiences directly shape our expectations and preferences in our formalized learning spaces or our classrooms. We cannot deny that. Today, by the age of two or three, many children already reach out to objects and expect to be able to turn them on by swiping them with a gesture. Also, the mobilization of content has shifted the way many of us access information. In 2012, roughly half of the adult U.S. population owned a smartphone. Now that's a device that wasn't even invented six years before that. And those six years, by the way, were some pretty rough years economically in the United States. And roughly half of adults own one of these expensive devices. These devices provide smartphone owners with access to a world of knowledge in an instant from anywhere at any time. These devices, which we still oddly refer to as phones, are really internet-connected miniature multimedia studios equipped to create photographs, videos, and audio recordings, and share them with a global audience in an instant. Through these devices, many of our students experience, record, and share their greatest achievements and defeats every single day. And all of these are learning moments. Yet still these devices are banned in many classrooms today and rarely incorporated into blended learning activities. DVRs and internet television continue to time shift the content delivery experience of audience members as do smartphones. Now think about what a television show is. It's the delivery of content to a viewer, not too different from the expectation a student has for each of his college classes. It used to be that you had to be in front of that television at 8 p.m. on Tuesday to view a show that was scheduled to air at that time. Not any longer. Now many people record more shows than, ev than they'll ever watch, and then at their convenience they sit down and surf the recordings to select a show that aligns with their preferences at the moment. Now that's what I call personalized learning. When most students arrive on their college campus for class, they are expected to be in a specific place at a specific time for a specific amount of time to have content delivered to them. And depending on the number of other students in that room and the style of the instruction, it may be no more interactive than a television show. 
So we must ask ourselves as we begin to design our blended learning environments, is this the best use of the precious face-to-face -face time that we spend with our students? At one time it made sense to spend all of our time with our students delivering content to them, but not anymore. Today we have dynamic options for transforming this model. Let's circle back to our question at hand here, which is, what is it exactly that leads to high engagement in some blended learning environments and not in others? Well, there are certainly a variety of factors at play here that are beyond your control, but there's one that's square on your plate. Fostering student engagement in your blended learning class has less to do with technology being used in that class and more to do with how you use the technology. Research shows that engagement increases in blended learning when technology is used to support learning rather than as an add-on used for some other objective. For example, to make materials more accessible by putting electronic versions online or by using technology as a vehicle to make a class more environmentally friendly. Not that these are bad uses of technology by any means, but they aren't examples of blended learning environments that will increase student engagement. Rather, to increase engagement, technology should be aligned with learning objectives. It should be used as a means to transform learning from a passive to an active experience and move students from isolated learners to an engaged community of inquiry. In 1987, Chickering and Gamson wrote the formative article, Seven Principles for Good Practice in Undergraduate Education, long before blended learning was in the picture. The authors wrote, Learning is not a spectator sport. Students do not learn much just sitting in class listening to teachers, memorizing prepackaged assignments, and spitting out answers. They must talk about what they are learning, write about it, relate it to past experiences, and apply it to their daily lives. They must make what they learn part of themselves. To create an engaging blended learning environment, you must create a learning environment that empowers your students to make their learning part of themselves. Now, from a bird's eye view, that means learning in your class won't look like this. Rather, it will look more like this. By making this transformation, the way your students will be learning in your class will be more closely aligned with the way they are learning outside of your class. In a blended learning experience, the world is your classroom. Have your students use social media tools to find and connect with subject matter experts around the world. Learn from them and share what they've learned with their peers. By harnessing the power of social media and Web 2.0 technologies within the design of your blended learning environment, learning will become alive and students will have the opportunity to make it their own. Remember, this will be new to them. You are their guide and you will need to show them your vision, paint the picture for them, support and encourage them because many will be nervous about this new approach. But once you all get past this initial stage of community building, you will rejoice in your new classroom without walls.